Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through septic arthritis. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com or in the infectious diseases section of the second edition of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. And you can find flashcards and questions to train your knowledge and help you remember the information for longer at members.zerotofinals.com. So let's jump straight in. Septic arthritis refers to infection in a joint. Infection in a joint is a medical emergency. The infection can rapidly destroy the joint and cause systemic illness, including sepsis. It has a mortality rate, meaning the risk of death, of around 10%. Infection may occur in a native joint, meaning an original joint, or in a prosthetic joint replacement. Infection in a prosthetic joint is a big problem and happens in around 1% of joint replacements. Extensive measures are taken to prevent it, such as perioperative prophylactic antibiotics. Infection is more likely to occur in revision surgery rather than in the initial joint replacement. Let's talk about the presentation. Septic arthritis usually only affects a single joint, often a knee. It presents with a rapid onset of a hot, red, swollen and painful joint stiffness and reduced range of motion in the joint and systemic symptoms such as fever, lethargy and sepsis. Let's talk about the common bacteria. Staphylococcus aureus is the most common causative organism. Other bacteria include Neisseria gonorrhea or gonococcus in sexually active individuals. Group A streptococcus, most commonly streptococcus pyogenes. Haemophilus influenza and Escherichia coli or E. coli. A Tom tip for you. In a young patient presenting with a single acutely swollen joint, consider gonococcal septic arthritis until proven otherwise. The gram stain reveals a gram-negative diplococcus. Urinary or genital symptoms associated with a swollen, sore joint should make you think about reactive arthritis. But septic arthritis caused by Neisseria gonorrhea is the more urgent and dangerous differential that needs to be excluded. Let's talk about the differential diagnosis. The key differential diagnoses of a single warm swollen joint are gout and the joint fluid will show urate crystals that are negatively birefringent of polarised light in patients with gout. Pseudogout and the joint fluid will show rod-shaped calcium pyrophosphate crystals that are positively birefringent of polarised light in patients with pseudogout. Reactive arthritis, which is typically triggered by urethritis or gastroenteritis and is associated with conjunctivitis in the eye. And hemarthrosis, which is bleeding into the joint, usually after trauma. Finally, let's talk about management. Have a low threshold for suspecting septic arthritis, particularly in immunosuppressed patients. Delaying treatment has significant consequences. Joint fluid examination is usually required to exclude septic arthritis. There will be a local acute hot joint policy to guide which team admits the patient, for example, orthopedics, rheumatology, or infectious diseases, and what antibiotics to use and for how long. Joint aspiration is performed before starting antibiotics, and a sample of the fluid is sent for gram staining 
crystal microscopy for gout and pseudogout, culture, and antibiotic sensitivities. The joint fluid may be purulent, which means full of pus. The gram stain result is usually available quickly and may give a clue about the causative organism. Culture and antibiotic sensitivities will take longer. Empirical IV or intravenous antibiotics should be given until the sensitivities are known. Antibiotics are usually continued for four to six weeks in total, initially intravenous, then oral. The choice of antibiotic depends on the local guidelines. An example choices are flucloxacillin, which is often first line, clindamycin in penicillin allergy, and vancomycin if MRSA is suspected. Keftriaxone is typically used for treating Neisseria gonorrhea. Now head over to members.zerotofinals.com to test yourself on how much you understood and remembered from this video. The members site contains illustrated flashcards, multiple choice questions, and short answer questions designed to perfectly complement the Zero to Finals resources. It also features an Anki-like fact trainer tool which you can use to train your knowledge on the key facts you need for your medical exams. You test yourself on the fact, then rate how difficult you found that fact. The site then spaces out your repetitions and tells you when you're due to review it again. Going over the facts with space repetitions helps ensure they stay in your long-term memory. A link to the member site is in the video description.